This video is about Van der Waals forces, which ties into a few things we've already talked about. We discussed polar bonds in terms of water molecules. Uh, if you remember going back to our water molecule, there's a covalent bond that ends up holding the water molecule together. So we've got oxygen in the middle and the two little hydrogens on either side. But remember, the oxygen is more negative because it pulls on the electrons harder. So we have like a negative end with the oxygen, and then it's a little bit more positive out on the sides near the hydrogen. So we got the same thing here. It's negative oxygen, positive hydrogens. In this case, what we end up seeing is this attractive force between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen. This is referred to as a hydrogen bond. Um, Overall, this category of a weak attractive force between charged particles is attributed to Johannes van der Waals. So we'll get his mugshot up here. He's one of the many dead white guy scientists that will be going over this school year. Um, so he has been uh, attributed to this whole category of just broad attractions between molecules with different charges, molecules that have different polarity. And uh, this all comes down to the electrons in those molecules and the tendency for those electrons to either shift um, in, in one location to another, which then ends up charging the area around it. Now, keep in mind, these are very, very weak forces. They are far weaker than, say, the covalent bonds that are actually holding this molecule together. So the covalent bonds, remember, are what's actually keeping the hydrogen attached to the oxygen. The hydrogen bond, which is basically just this attraction between the positive and the negative end of the water molecule, that's a very, very weak attraction. So again, we talked about this in very general terms when we discussed the properties of water, but now we're going to look at the way it impacts some other things in biology. Get Mr. Van der Waals out of there for us. Uh, before looking at another thing that we'll talk about this year that plays a role, definitely a major thing, is the formation of DNA. We'll spend two chapters talking about DNA. We'll discuss how it's copied and then the idea of how it's passed on you know, to, uh, to future generations. But the main thing that we'll talk about in the chapter on when it's copied is its structure and how this was figured out. It was actually two American scientists, Watson and Crick. They came up with this model of DNA. Uh, this structure that it has is called a double helix, a sort of spirally structure. But the attraction between some of the base pairs, that's referred to as a hydrogen bond. So these are important things that actually help hold together the molecular structure of DNA. Now, some of your... Uh, DNA base pairs make two hydrogen bonds. You can see them there, and others make three. Uh, we'll get into why that's the case once we start covering that chapter. But I'm just trying to give you some examples of things that use these forces, because even though they are weak, uh, they're definitely things that are prominent. Uh, this picture is actually straight out of your textbook. Your online book does a pretty good job with this one. Uh, it talks about geckos and how like, they will walk up glass and things that are extremely smooth. It has to do with the bottoms of their feet. And if you read the description at the bottom of the figure, it says they have millions of microscopic hairs in the bottoms of their feet that are about as long as two widths of a human hair each. And then each of those spreads into a thousand smaller pads. So these little tiny pads are attached to a strand that is the width of two human hairs. So they have these extremely fine extensions on the bottoms of their feet. What that ends up doing is it almost makes a Velcro-like attraction when uh, they adhere onto things. And, and Velcro actually uses similar forces to what we're talking about here with, uh, with Van der Waals forces. So this is something that even though it's a weak attraction between molecules, it does play a major part in some things we'll talk about as we move forward through the school year. Uh, if you remember what we were discussing with ionic bonds, where we had the, uh, the sodium and the chlorine to make table salt. Remember we said the sodium is positive and the chlorine is negative, and then they end up being attracted to each other to be ionically bonded together into one molecule. It's very similar to that. It, it all follows this idea of polarity, just following the concept that you have a positive and a negative attraction between two different charged particles. So uh, that's really all you need to know for the Van der Waals forces. Make sure you answer the questions at the end of this video, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.